on a hot, hazy, and humid early spring morning. Welcome to Teen A Bay here in picturesque city of Queen Anne. And this is the second round of the UIM Formula One World Championship at the inaugural Grand Prix Binh Dinh, Vietnam. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Michael, along with my partner, Jonathan Jones of Wales. And we welcome you to day two of a spectacular three-day weekend of racing here on the lovely coast of Vietnam as we greet you for a pair of sprint races that will earn the drivers valuable championship points for their quest to become world champion. But before we get down to the particulars of the race day, Let's take a minute and tell you all about the magic of this wondrous region here in the central coast of Vietnam. Now, Jonathan, you and I have been here for almost a week, and I know this area has been so special to me, and in particular, building so many happy memories. What are your thoughts about coming here for the very first time? Well, you know, we've just come uh, off the back of uh, Indonesia, and now we're here in Vietnam. The region that we're actually uh, racing in is absolutely spectacular. We paid some visits to the temples, um, the resorts all the way along the beachfront here are absolutely second to none. We're staying in a villa with his own private pool about uh, four to five kilometers just uh, south of the, uh, the race circuit here this weekend. So if you're looking, if you arrive in Vietnam and you're looking for somewhere to, to spend some time to enjoy the culture, this is the region to visit. It's a spectacular country with nothing but memories and happy moments. Well, I'll tell you what, the interesting thing about this race circuit here, it's round two of this championship here in Queen Eon, Vietnam, and maybe one of the fastest, most exciting circuits of the year. Jonathan, give us your impressions as we go around this six-pin course. So there we have it. You can see the start pontoon. The boats come off the pontoon, dead engine start, and then they shoot straight over to turn number four. Then they get onto the circuit itself. So from number four, they swing around five, down six, and down past that start finish line, 546 meters, into turn number one, 317, into two, throw it back, about 80, 85 degree turn there, 329 meters then, into the only right hand that we have, float the boat around there, and then head out to the far end of the circuit into number four, five, six, and down past the start finish line right now possibly the wind won't be too much of a factor they were expecting it to be about 15 knots coming out of the southeast which means it comes from the left side of your screen blowing across to the right hand side because you've got mountains and the land mass there it's going to be a, a lot easier for the drivers to navigate it's not coming off the open ocean in the bay so it should be picture perfect this afternoon now qualifying yesterday there were three qualifying sessions in all sorts of dramas with a pair of Swedes fighting for the top spot and the pole for tomorrow's Grand Prix. In case you missed it, here's how it all played out yesterday. And as the 18 drivers worked their way back out from the start pontoon for a start of three qualifying sessions that took an hour, drama right away. Oh, my, down the front straight away. The Italian Alberto Camparato with Team Abu Dhabi got it all wrong as he blew the boat over. He stalled it and then barrel rolled to a really heavy hit down in turn number one, the fastest part of this race circuit. And after he had gone over, it was determined by team manager Guido Capellini he decided to sit him out and give him a rest and Camparato will not start today it'll be Rashid Alquamzi stepping in for him but then it all came down to the very last moments where he had two Swedes fighting Jonas Anderson looking for a second straight pull to the air but out of nowhere here came his friend Eric Stark of the victory team as the driver from Sweden driving for the a Dubai group came by and he ran a sparkling time of a 43.657 or 156.92 kilometers per hour. Eric Stark captured his seventh career pole position and he will start today in that number one spot in the first of two sprint races. Now, four weeks ago, the 2024 campaign opened up with a resounding start with a pair of 15-minute sprint races highlighted in Saturday in front of tens of thousands of fans. Here's a look back what it was like on Lake Toba. And from the start of the race, it was Jonas Anderson who had the fast time on the pole, and he was chased very quickly by Bartek Marzouak as the field circled around. Stefan Arad, one of the two rookies 
making himself known. He was on the inside, but also Ben Jelf, the 23-year-old from the UK, was pushing hard, trying to challenge for that number two spot. And the two Team Abu Dhabi boats of Thani El Quimsy and Alberto Camparato trying to just stay up in the top five. But when it was all said and done, Jonas Anderson dominated. He sprint race number one over 13 seconds ahead of Bartak Marzouak. And Ben Jelf, and then in heat number two now, the other half of the field, it was Eric Stark who had qualified second quick, being pushed to the max by Rusty Wyatt as he was trying to nail down his first uh, victory in his very first weekend of racing. Side by side, Sami Celio was in a real dogfight with Marit Stromoy in that four cycle engine that she has and it was a good battle for the top three spots as they came through and slid on a very difficult race course but when it was all said and done it was Eric Stark coming by winning by seven seconds picking up ten championship points Rusty Wyatt second the Frenchman Peter Marat third and that was exciting here a month ago in Indonesia but now here in the southeast area of the country here in the uh, Chinese region on the north side and here we are in the southeast Asian region and this is the 19th time in our career that we have raced in southeast Asia it's been going back many years and uh, this is the first time we've ever come here to Vietnam it's a lovely lovely place and it's great to be here but it's stifling hot today here in the morning fixture it's over 30 degrees centigrade and uh, really the big thing today is for the drivers to keep it cool they've been sitting in the cockpits they've already gone around once for their uh, parade lap in front of these thousands of people who are here and yes the Vietnam acting president Vo Thi An Wan is here she was here for the opening ceremonies that took place about an hour and a half ago so we've got uh, tremendous dignitaries from all over Vietnam ready to watch this race as we get half the field lined up in this first heat so uh, it should be pretty exciting to see how it all pans out. So as the drivers continue, you can see the umbrellas as the temperature continues to climb. But the conditions are perfect on the water. And there will be this race. Sprint number one, it'll be 18 laps around, close to about 15 minutes in length. These drivers will be going for championship points. And uh, when that happens, uh, it's going to be a, a big, big fixture. This is something new that we're doing in 2024, where we're adding points not only for the Grand Prix, where you get 20 to win, 15 for second, 12 for third, and so on, but the day before, here on these pair of sprint races, the maximum, you win the race, you're going to get 10 points. And with that, Rusty Wyatt, the driver out of Canada, leads this championship right now by four points with 29 on the air with Eric Stark sitting in the second spot just four points back with 25 he'll have the pole position for the first heat and Jonas Anderson who's the defending world champion will be uh, starting uh, number one in heat number two he has 22 points on the air he is seven points back so it's very close in the championship and the big thing about it is that uh, Eric Stark the uh, 36 year old from Stockholm better known as the boy wonderer was wondrous yesterday with that 43.65 second qualifying time at 156 kilometers per hour let's hear from the man from sweden number one today I'm, I'm so, so happy, happy and so happy, happy for the team. We were both was really fantastic to drive today. And, you know, it's so hard in the last minute because I've been, like, I think the two last races I've been, been on pole when it's two, three minutes left and he's do, doing it on the last lap. So, you know, I was, you know, the minutes go so slow. But today we made it and I'm very happy. Big smile on his face. And yes, this morning, my colleague Jonathan Jones is down perusing the paddock, ready to give us the latest updates. And I think he's got Eric Stark live. I'm going to throw it down to you. Jonesy, what do you got? Yeah, we got Stark here. Eric, so far, so good this weekend. Indonesia was amazing. You seem to have one of the, in fact, I, pr I think the fastest boats out there this weekend. How can you see the whole weekend developing? And where do you reckon you're going to finish in this sprint race? 
<laughs> of course, the plan is to win. But yeah, the, you know, we did, we have uh, done a good progress this year. You know, we 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 develop every race. You know, we have a very fast boat this race. Um, you know, for me, it's very easy to drive the boat. So you know, if if, if we just make the start, uh, I I see this in a positive That's way. That's cool. And who do you reckon is going to be your main competitor in the sprint race this morning? No, for sure, Rusty, and then um, I think I have Maureen there. They're like both are very good drivers. So, but you know, if I if I can take this the start, I, I trust myself, and uh, I think we will end up. Yeah. Winning this. So basically, get in the lead, make up some solid ground when you've got that calm water, which is going to be a big advantage, yeah. and hopefully build up that gap so that as the race progresses, when you come to the back markers, you're going to have a little bit of a cushion there in case there's any problem. Yeah, exactly. That's you know that's the plan to. You know, pull away as much as possible uh, for five first lap, uh, and then try to pace pace myself and you know save the engines. We have a long race tomorrow and with the same engine, so yeah, it's a long weekend. That's cool. I'm sure he's going to be right there at the end. Watch out for Stack. He has to be the favourite here, Steve. I think he does too, Jonathan. I think he's got a great chance to uh, pull away. But I'll tell you something: it is not going to be easy with the. The talk of uh, the driver who we feel is uh, so far the driver of the year is Rusty Wyatt out of Canada. Nobody expected this driver from uh, Ontario to step in and win in his very first race, which he did a month ago in Indonesia. He finished fourth in the North American Tour last year and uh, picked up one win at Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. And um, he... Uh, really came down and figured out exactly the nuances of a very good boat that uh, Scott Gilman is the team manager with the uh, Sharjah team got him relaxed got him in the boat got him familiar and it didn't take him long before Rusty Wyatt figured out a boat that he had never been in before much less the brand of a DAC because he had been running a uh, French built boat for uh, all his time in North America so We'll see how he does. Peter Moran of France, of course, who will be starting in that third spot, as Eric mentioned, is a, uh, a driver who is in his seventh year. He is more of a, a driver who was uh, a long distance racer. He ran in a 24 hours of run a, a couple of times. He won a couple of uh, victories there and then transferred over to the sprint racing here into Formula One. And uh, he's been steady. He's doing well. And uh, he got uh, penalized in that first race. He was going to easily finish up in the top 10 in the eighth, but uh, he got penalized uh, a, a lap, so he was dropping down into that ninth place position. So that's where he stands in the championship. So he needs to do well this afternoon. Got to love the moto gliders that are flying over. There's a, a total of about seven of them. The weather conditions are perfect for these riders to take these airplanes uh, and these paragliders through here down the front straightaway. Well, we mentioned Rusty. Let's get a chance to talk with the uh, driver from Ontario, Rusty Wyatt. We uh, ran into good luck tonight as well. And the water was obviously quite a bit better. We were able to position ourselves in the pack a little better, and it was a little smoother for us, so the thing went well. And, uh, you know, we just came one, one spot short of that podium. It was unfortunate. It's long Always put a big smile on his face, and why not? The season's gone so well for him so far. And uh, hardly to believe, though, it was about a week ago that he and his brother were sitting out on, a, on an ice floe, like an iceberg on a lake up in northern Canada with their shirts off having a great great time and uh, the weather is finally warming up in canada but they had a great time it was like they were revisiting the movie the titanic but he comes here and it's now very very warm and uh, for him yes it's uh, the big thing is uh, just adjusting to this heat which is uh, tremendously unusual for people who come from the northern climes including uh, Two Swedes were fighting for uh, respectability, and uh, of course the Canadian Rusty Wyatt. So three of the people who lead this championship are here, coming from snowbound countries. So uh, the big thing is, will they get adjusted to the heat today? Let's go back down to uh, Jonathan. I believe you got the Canadian alongside. Steve, I mean, this guy is the revelation of this year. I mean, coming off a win in Indonesia, his first ever race in Formula One, Rusty. So, what was the secret in Indonesia, and can you actually repeat that here in Vietnam? 
Well, that's the plan, Nate. Uh, Indonesia was a great race, you know, getting uh, together with Sharjah for the first race. Everybody was just clicking so well. The boat was working so well. So, you know what? It, uh, we're in the same boat here. We, we, everything seems to be working very, very well here. It's a little bit of a different course, so feeling, uh, feeling quite happy with the setup and uh, everything. Everything should be going well. We got a little bit of a battle here ahead of us with Stark. So let's, let's go. Yeah, the other thing is, of course, prior to coming to the first event in uh, Indonesia, he's running a DAC, a boat that's built in northern Italy. I mean, Rusty never even sat in that boat. Limited amount of practice, and my goodness, was he fast in the race. So you've obviously had a bit more time to settle into the boat, to understand its characteristics, how it handles on the water. Do you think, because you've had that extra time, that it should put you in better position for this event? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, extra test today was, was really good. We spent as much time as we possibly could out there today and trying to get the setup just a little bit more. You know, we, we wanted to be a little more in P4, obviously, you know. P4 is great, but, you know, we're, we're going for the win now. It, uh, we know the boat can do it, and everybody around us, we got a hell of a setup. So just looking forward to this next race. That's cool. The other thing is, you know that... Uh the victory boat is really quick off the line. I could see that you've been on that far end of the circuit this morning, practicing your starts. Where do you reckon you're going to be on that first lap? Well, that's the plan to get by start great right off the bat. That's what we all want. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think we uh, picked up a little speed there in practice. So hopefully we got that much more good around Starkey. Steve, sounds like he's in pretty good shape. Watch out for this guy this weekend. Back to you. Ice flows, and he's on the go. Today we'll see how it pans out for Rusty Wyatt again. We're kind of teasing you here this afternoon. We've got two great short sprint races, 18 laps around. We've split the field in half, but it's very important now in this championship of 2024 as they fight for 10 points maximum today with the victory. And at that uh, opening sequence of races uh, back in Indonesia, uh, Rusty White not only won the race uh, with picking up uh, 20 points, but he finished in second place in his heat race. So he got 29, which put him ahead of Eric Stark, who's got 25, and then Jonas Anderson with 22. So as my partner goes around, and we're getting closer and closer to the first race of the weekend after yesterday's big qualifying session. And uh, again, let me remind everybody who is uh, really a big fans of uh, Alberto Camparado. He will not race today. And uh, he barrel rolled in a big way yesterday, so he's being replaced by Rashid al -Quimsy. Let's go back down to Jonathan. Uh, you got uh, the Red Devil boys. Can you believe it, Steve? We're on, we're on the start pontoon here. A lot of tension, at least I thought there was, but with Ferdinand, he said, hey, come on the boat, let's go and have a chat. Ferdinand, great to have a chat with you here this weekend, especially literally minutes before the start of the race. How do you see this race progressing, and how was your performance this weekend? Uh, I think we find uh, <coughs> a great setup, and uh, we are ready for this race. I hope to, uh, to overtake some of the guys on the left, and uh, let's uh, have a good one. I'll tell you what's interesting, the two leading boats at the moment are DSCs. This is a Barba, another boat that's built in Italy by Massimo Ruggiero. On this circuit, do you think the DSCs have an advantage over this type of boat, or do you feel that you have the advantage once you get into the rough water, once the boats start going around, do you think that will give you an advantage over these other craft? Mm, I'm not sure, but this boat is handling pretty well, so I'm, uh, I'm happy with the boat. And Let's see what they can do. You know, we've seen some great things from Ferdinand in the past. I remember when he first started racing. First time I saw him in an event was in Portugal in the Grand Prix there a few years ago. And he really did set the world alight. I mean, he was a rocket ship. He's won a few Grand Prix since then. And I reckon he could be, if not a podium finisher, he could be in for the laurels here this morning in this actual race. Back to you, Steve. Yeah, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde career so far, Jonathan. Ferdinand uh, has crashed out uh, both times in Indonesia last year and then this year he was gone before they even started counting laps as he barrel rolled to a stop but he's got a lot of talent this driver is starting his 15th career race already has a win he's got four podiums and he did win in Italy when he uh, came through in a big big way and uh, for him it's going to be a fantastic uh, weekend he hopes to get back on track because He's down farther in the standings, and he needs to catch on quickly being in 14th place. The scene is set. The tension is building. We are about ready to go racing for the first time this weekend. It's time to split the field of 18 drivers and rock away from the championship here for the 2024 UIM Formula One World Championship. Binh Dinh, Vietnam, coming up next.
on a warm, spectacular late morning here on the edge of the Eastern Sea. It's day two of the UIM Formula One World Championship here in the lovely city of Cunion at the inaugural Grand Prix of Binh Dinh, Vietnam. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Michael, along with my partner, as always, Jonathan Jones of Wales. And we greet you here on the shores of Tai Ai Bay, getting set, as we should, for a pair of dramatic heat races with drivers fighting for valuable championship points prior to tomorrow's Grand Prix. Tell you what, it's going to be a fantastic day. Yes, the temperatures are red hot right now. They're heading toward maybe as far as 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 C this afternoon. But we've got some good winds, not crazy winds, because they're coming off of the southeast. They're blowing across the land, and it will not affect the race circuit as much as uh, it was coming from the opposite direction. So as the people have got umbrellas all laid out and ready to go to hide from this intense heat, it's such a beautiful atmosphere here in Vietnam. It's fantastic. The beaches are fantastic. And the whole ambiance of these people get a chance to uh, just enjoy this early spring morning here on a Saturday. And, um, yeah, there's a tree of umbrellas of people uh, enjoying and staying out of this intense heat. Now, for the second time in less than a month, we are uh, a few degrees north of the equator, and as we enjoy this historic and serene part of the Far East on this truly picturesque early spring day, and JJ, for us, this is the first time here in this fascinating country. People always talk about its beauty, but there's so much more than that. Absolutely, Steve. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of puff because I've been down on the pontoon talking to some of the drivers and uh, back here now in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the booth with you. But, yeah, let's talk about Vietnam. We've been here now for about a week, Steve. We've visited temples, different areas. The beaches are absolutely unbelievable. We're staying on a villa with its own private pool right on the beach. So if you, if you are a tourist, and you're visiting Vietnam, trust me, come to this area. It is unbelievable. All right, catch your breath. Central coast of Vietnam in this beautiful province is something that you'll always remember. Just a lovely place. Let's talk a little bit about the course map as the drivers line up now. Here in round two of this championship here in uh, Quy Nhiang, Vietnam, maybe one of the fastest, most exciting circuits, Jonathan, we've had in a long time. And uh, give me your impressions of this six-pin, very fast race course. Well, as you can see, you've got the start pontoon there. All the boats are going to be lined up. They go from that pontoon, the dead engine start, up to number four. From number four into five, and then into six, and then they start the first lap of the Grand Prix. Down past the start-finish line, into turn number one, 370 meters. To the far end of the circuit, number two. Throw the boat around, 80-degree turn. And then you come into the only right-hander that we have at this event. T tricky to get around there because these boats don't like round right hand corners up to number four short shoot into number five then get that boat absolute maximum acceleration maximum speed as you go in through number six and down past that start finish line all right it'll be fantastic this afternoon as we talked about the conditions should be perfect here now 18 drivers 13 uh, different countries three different continents including a pair of rookies are here in these sprint races that we're getting set for one and two with 10 points for the championship up for grabs let's take a look at how they'll partake here eric stark will be the man he's the pole sitter he did a quick lightning lap yesterday with a 155.87 kilometer lap then rusty wyatt second peter moran the french driver in third then fernand zandberg and hopefully uh, picking up some points today philip roms farther down cedric de Geen, Brett Dillard and rounding it out here, getting set to run as uh, a good uh, Duarte Benevente. So they go. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're just seconds away from the start and they explode away from the dock. And here we go. 18 laps around as they head off down toward the commended boys. They've got to maintain their lanes here. And once they come around turns four there, five and six, then they can take off and start moving and they Count the start of the race as soon as they come across the start finish line and right away you can see Eric Stark trying to shut the door on Rusty Wyatt on the outside you're left with Peter Moran right there so the top three boats very close Rusty Wyatt as he goes down into turn number one showing some good speed trying to challenge Stark but he's got the clear water he's got the whole shot 
And the Swede goes into turn number two with about a 10 bolt length cushion, Jonathan. That's what he was looking for when I interviewed him just before this race. He said, I've got to get a clean start. If I can get in the lead, I'll have clear water for the first 10, 15 laps. Hopefully, I'll be able to build up a bit of a gap. But at the moment, yet Rusty's in that second slot. He's hanging on to him. But I can see that gap getting a little bit bigger as we see Peter Moran, the uh, Team China boat, in that third position. So at the moment, you can see Rusty on the outside trying to kick a different line, keeping the speed up, but you can see Stark again taking a very tight line on the inside and pulling away as we speak. All right, one lap into the record book. Stark about 10 bolt lengths ahead. We checked the difference. 1.5 seconds, as expected. Peter Moran trying to stay right with Rusty Wyatt, but he's drifting back just a tad. He's just about two seconds behind the Canadian. And then you got Philip Roms in the four spot. So there you see Peter Moran. We talked about him, the veteran driver with the China CTIC team. And uh, he's going to try to pick up some more points today. He was fastest yesterday in Q1, Jonathan. And he came out here, and he was the fastest in morning warm-up. He did a 154.82. His fast time was a 44.25. So he's got speed, but he's got to figure out the formula of success to get himself, first of all, past the Canadian, and then somehow, in his short race, get to number one. Yeah, when we looked at the times this morning in free practice, when they were setting the boats up for this event today, you could see that there was literally a tenth, or maybe a tenth and a half, between probably the top six or seven boats. So the problem that Wyatt's got them at the moment in that second slot, you can see, he's having to take all that dirty water, all the spray, all the uh, the wash that's coming off uh, uh, the, the lead bolt, and that's slowly but surely slowing him down just that little bit. But at the moment, Peter pushing really hard in that sl third slot and not letting uh, Wyatt have his own way. Eric Stark, the driver with the victory team out in the lead, he finished second to fellow Swede Jonas Anderson in the championship run. Uh, he finished uh, years ago, and now this time around, in this season, he finished second in the first race behind Rusty Wyatt, and Jonas Anderson, for the fourth year in a row, Jonathan, has had to dig himself out of a hole for the championship after the first race. He has not led the championship after one round in the last four years. Yeah, you can see Wyatt then, Steve, trying to take a tighter line. The problem when you take a tight line is you bury the boat. By that, I mean you slow the boat a little bit more coming into the corners, and then you need a little bit extra acceleration to come out of the turns. Now, the way I understand it, although the lead boat at the moment and uh, Rusty, they're both both running these DACs and uh, third place boat is uh, about, uh, yeah, I beg your pardon, is a more boat which was built uh, somewhere in France, I'm not quite sure well, but um, at the same time the, the lead boat is slightly shorter and slightly wider than the boat of, uh, of Rusty and that means that it, unless the water gets a lot rougher it, and he's got that clear water ahead of him, he can probably slowly but surely increase the gap between first and second. He is right now, Jonathan. It's over three seconds. Eric Stark pulling away slowly from Rusty Wyatt, the Canadian back in second place. Rusty holding his own right now with this man, Peter Moran of France. And uh, Moran's going to do his best to try to continue to climb the ladder. Why? Because you get valuable championship points, as we've talked about here. If you finished in third, you only get eight points. If you finished in second, you get nine. So every point is very valuable in this championship. And Rusty knows that better than anybody right now. Yeah, and I think the advantage that Stark actually has at the moment is the, the actual boat that he's racing. He spent a lot of time testing over the winter in that boat. He used it all of last year. Rusty, at the same at the same hand, as I spoke to him earlier, he was saying, you know, it's the first time in Indonesia that he sat in one of these types of boats. He races normally in North America, where they run different engines, slightly different boats. So it's going to take him a couple of races to actually be able to get the maximum out of that boat so that he can actually attack Stark. All right, we'll see if that uh, fans out for him at the moment here as uh, they continue to go around. Now, we've completed already a third of the way coming up here as we check it. And yet, going by us, there's Owen Jelf, the driver out of uh, the UK. He's, he's doing really well, Jonathan. He's really improving himself. And Owen Jelf in this championship, he's down, or I should say Ben Jelf, is uh, eighth in the championship. And uh, Ben is doing really well. He's only 23 years old. He's from uh, 
uh, England, and uh, right now he's trying to uh, climb the ladder here. But uh, he's trying to get respectability, and I think Ben Jelf will be able to do that. Yeah, he's part of a, a dynasty, really, of uh, racing drivers. I did know his grandfather very well, and uh, he was very competitive. And then his father and his, fa and his uncle, so his father's brother, they've been racing for many, many years in different classes. Uh, I, I think they've done one or two uh, Formula One events, but they've been very, very strong in Formula Two. And now Owen, who really started as a junior driver using these small little uh, monohull boats with 10 horsepower engines, I believe. So he started in that class and he worked his way up in the Formula 2. He showed, that, he showed that he was very, very capable there. And now he's in at the deep end in Formula 1 and slowly but surely they're making solid progress. Bart Benevente getting lapped now by Rusty Wyatt as he slid by him, heading down toward the right-hander. And uh, it'll be, it looks like uh, Peter Moran now looking to get around the veteran driver from Portugal and that Atlantic team, boat number 10, as they go down into turns number 4, 5, and 6. There's your leader coming out of uh, turn number 5, heading down toward the front straightaway. Rusty Wyatt continues to hound Eric Stark, but... Uh, Close the gap a little bit, Jonathan. Maybe a second here as we're past uh, the third mark here. Looking for one more lap, and we'll be halfway home on this 18-lap quest for heat one of two this afternoon as we split the field up and they fight for championship points. This will not determine the starting order for tomorrow because that was determined yesterday in qualifying, but it's all about getting race uh, time on the water and also getting points. Yeah, and he's 1.679 seconds now behind the uh, the lead boat to start, and he's been able to hang on to him, but you can see again he's having that rough water as he's trying to make progress. So it's going to be one thing catching up with him. I think it's going to be another thing actually overtaking him, but you can see why it's still pushing really hard. As the water gets rougher, they come against these back markers. All it needs is for Eric to maybe try and get inside or the outside. You can see now Eric coming to take a back marker. If he doesn't get out of the way, that's going to slow Eric a little bit and it may give Rusty that opportunity to take the lead. All right, he just did that. As a matter of fact, you can see that Rusty White gained a half a second back on the leader Eric Stark. And uh, Stark trying to do his best to carve his way through some of the back markers here. Remember, even with the field only half the boats, nine, tomorrow it'll be fun to watch 18 boats on this course, less than two kilometers around, and traffic will really play a point. Uh, as we get set into tomorrow's Grand Prix. Yes, Stark there again, impeded by some of those slower drivers as you come into Lapland. You can see the pace of these two front runners as they side their way through the circuit. They're already up to something like seventh or eighth boat that they're actually lapping. Um, and you can see that Rusty's close, but Steve, is he close enough? No, he's not, not yet. He just worked his way around Cedric de Guin, the driver from France and the Maverick team, down in the seventh spot. Brett Diller, the American is in the sixth spot with the China CTIC team. Ferdinand Zandbergen in that fifth position with uh, the Red Devil boys, and they're trying to do the best they can to get up into the top three. But right now, Philip Roms is having a good day. He's in the fourth spot, Jonathan. He didn't start uh, very uh, far down the ladder. He was in the sixth spot, but he's jumped two places, and he's up to fourth. I was talking to Scott Gilman this morning because I do know that Roms is an incredibly talented driver, and I've seen him in the past right up at the sharp end. And for the last couple of races, they've been struggling with some kind of fuel problem, something to do with the tank. But Scott said this morning they found the problem last night, and he feels confident that he's going to be able to put on a really good show here this weekend. Roms up in that fourth position. That's a great position to be in for him. For people who are just tuning in for the first time this weekend, they have changed this race circuit. It was going to be a nine-pin race course, two right-handers. It was going to be over two kilometers. Well, they shaved it down, and they made it actually a little bit quicker, even though it's 1.9 kilometers around. They got a long straightaway here, but uh, there's only one right-hander, and it's a big commitment to get through it rather than just streaking through like they had with the plan to right hand turns. You know, you pointed out like tomorrow you said with another eight boats out there, it's going to get a lot rougher and it's going to get a lot more difficult when they come up against these back markers. And I think that's where Rusty really comes into his own. He's a great strategist. He's got a great guy on the radio to him communicating here from uh, 
fr from the bank. So he'll be telling him exactly whether he should take tighter lines, maybe run the boat on the outside, keep the speed up through the corners, and whether that might make a difference and allow him to close up on that lead boat of Eric Stark. Boy, the difference now between Eric and Rusty has been building. Uh, Eric starting to pull away just a bit. It was up to 2.6 seconds. The question is, did Rusty get closer by two tenths of a second? But look at the difference between Rusty Wyatt and Peter Moran. He has dropped way back there. He is. He comes by. So the Frenchman comes through, and he's about uh, 11 seconds behind Rusty Wyatt, who's in second place. Steve, he knows he's not in the fight. He knows he can get a podium. He doesn't want to put too much stress on the engine because he's going to need that engine for the main event tomorrow. So I reckon what they're doing, Team China, is they said, look, you've got a big push in between yourself and Rom's in that fourth position. Let's go for a podium. Let's go for third. Let's not push the equipment too much so we're ready for the event tomorrow afternoon. Less than five laps left to go as they click off another uh, jitty here as they come by there you see rusty wine with four laps remaining jonathan and uh, the difference continues to be less than three seconds it's actually down now to 1.7 seconds so rusty wyatt starting to reel in the leader eric stark let's see if stark is just casually out there backing off just a tad or whether he's nibbling at rusty to try to push him over the limit right now and charge his way toward number one yeah, I think if he's going to be able to close the gap even more, Steve, he has to do it on that right-hander. Turn number three on the far end of the circuit. Because it looks to me like Sack has to set the boat a little bit and accelerate slightly slower out to that corner. Rusty keeps the boat on top of the water and just goes through there like a rocket ship. And I think that's where he may be able to gain a few tenths of a second, lap on lap, and being able to, put, to be able to take that uh, lead with three laps to go, Steve. Time is running out. I know, and Rusty's getting closer. It's down to a second. He is reeling them in, and let's see what you say. Will the philosophy work as they head down from three into uh, turn number three, the right-hander, Jonathan? Can Rusty gain some ground here as he comes through? What do you think? He definitely ha he did gain some ground there, Steve. Start took a slightly wider line. Rusty was really tight on that corner, kept the boat at maximum uh, speed. Now they're coming through, number four, number five, number six. He's right on his tail, Steve, with two laps to go. All right, we hold our breath now as Eric Stark comes whistling by. The driver has finished runner-up in this championship a couple of times, has never won the title, is hoping to gain 10 points right here by winning this heat. And as he fights his way around, he did that in Indonesia. He's trying to make it two heat wins in a row in two races here in 2044. And over on the right side, as he came through, it was very, very close. Rusty Wyatt almost caught him, but at the last second, Eric got out of the web and he pulled away. And I'll tell you what, Rusty was really lucky that he didn't turn that boat over in turn number two because he got the, on the he got on the inside of him. He could see a bit of a gap there. He accelerated away and the boat popped violently, almost losing control. But he's still there. He's still in second. And with 1.5 seconds uh, between the two of them, still it's just even Stevens. He can stick with him, but he just can't close that gap enough as you picked it up there, Steve, where he almost lost the boat. Teetering on the edge of disaster. You can see Mark Major there going, oh my, Lady Luck stepped in and saved him. But at the same time, he lost almost a full second by making that mistake. And he's still in pursuit here as we're running out of time in this first heat race as they come down with very little time left to go and eric stark hanging on to a lead of just 1.8 seconds rusty wyatt hasn't given up on his chase and peter Mariah is 10 seconds back from the leader so it's a two-horse race as they come out of the final turn here jonathan and as they come by and there you see the checkered flag is out and Eric Stark is two for two in 2024 as Eric Stark wins by 1.9 seconds and he captures a solid victory and he felt the heat all the way around for those 18 laps and Rusty Wyatt did everything he could and almost went over the margin of success, and he was teetering on the edge of disaster, and somehow he saved it, coming out of turn number two, heading for three, but it lost him a lot of valuable time, and his chances and hopes and dreams 
of finishing and coming up with a victory did not happen. But more importantly, he'll pick up nine points and he continues to sit in the leaderboard in that number one spot in this championship. Now with him winning this uh, heat race for Eric Stark, he gains 10 points. He's got 35 now on the air. But Rusty Wyatt finishing in second place, he's got uh, 38. So the difference between Stark, who's in second place in this championship, and Rusty Wyatt, who leads it after one, it's down to three points, so it's really heating up. And you gotta love the action that happened in that sprint race, 18 laps around. That's only the first of two, don't run off. We're gonna bring the last half of the field out. The next nine drivers are gonna be coming out for sprint race number two. As uh, Eric Stark wins, Rusty Wyatt comes up in second place by just a shade under two seconds. And they were dominating in the fact that they were fighting tooth and nail all the way through around this race course. Peter Moran is picking his spots. He drifted back. He was about 12 seconds back from the leader, but he shaved it back down to just under 10 seconds. And Philippe Roms came from sixth place off the start pontoon to finish fourth. He gained two valuable points uh, on that effort. Ferdinand Zandbergen finishing in the fifth spot. He lost a position after he started from fourth. And, uh, but more importantly, he uh, is in the top five for points. Brett Dillard, who started in the sixth position, uh, finished down in this six spot. So uh, pretty exciting here. Let's look at the unofficial results here. And the first of two sprint races this afternoon here in uh, lovely uh, Binh Dinh, uh, Vietnam. So we wait to see if uh, we'll get a chance to talk with the winner here shortly. Eric Stark wins, he gets 10 points. Rusty Wyatt finishing in second place, less than two seconds back. Peter Moran picks up eight points. Philip Roms, as we talked about, charged up two places to get seven points. Ferdinand Zanbergen gained uh, six points. Brett Dillard, who started fifth, finished in sixth spot. And then Ben Jelf with four points. Cedric Deguin with three. And Duarte Benevente continues to pick up points. He's now got five on the career so far in this 2024 season. So there you have it. That's the first nine. And yes, we will have the next nine coming up shortly here. But Eric Stark in this heat. So the driver from uh, the land of ice and snow handles the heat of not only the race, but uh, outside in the ambient temperature. We talked about it's uh, over 30 degrees Celsius right here in the morning, but the conditions couldn't be nicer here. It's such a lovely area that we were here in Vietnam. And for us, it's our first time coming here and uh, it's spectacular. The beaches are second to none. And um, I'll tell you what, not only the, the Binh Din region here, but also uh, the city is just uh, fantastic of Cui Dion. And uh, people have been very nice to us, very welcoming, and it's such a pleasure to come to Vietnam for the very first time. So as you can see, the, the uh, Osprey rescue team and our uh, our riders who are out there on their uh, jet skis getting themselves back into position, our safety vehicles. And we will slowly bring this field of uh, nine out of the water and make sure we've got the next nine ready to go. It's back-to-back -back sprint racing. And uh, coming up next, it's going to be uh, a fantastic uh, run. And we'll see if uh, Jonas Anderson, who in uh, Indonesia ran away with a 17-second win, can he dominate again today as he will lead uh, the group through in sprint race number two? So as the boats uh, are working their way back out and uh, we'll get the next set of uh, nine drivers out. I mentioned that Alberto Camparado of Team Abu Dhabi who had such a spectacular crash yesterday as he launched the boat. He uh, took it up in the air, he stalled it, he stuffed it, and then at the same time he barrel rolled the boat to a stop. And they decided what they were gonna do is to have him sit out, and he has been replaced. Ahmed Al-Fahim will, will um, be in this next race, but it'll be uh, a good chance for uh, the uh, young driver from the UAE to uh, get out and uh, push. We'll see if Rashid Al-Quimzi can do uh, a little bit better than Alberto Camparado, who is asked to be sitting out. So let's get the uh, unofficial results. And uh, tell you what, let's take first, let's take a look at the highlights of what we just saw. It was a very quick race. It was 18 laps around and off they went. And the whole question mark was who could get off the 
Start pontoon quickly, and as the field fanned out, you have to maintain your lane. You can't cross and slide yourself to gain positions until you've gotten around the commitment buoys, which are four, five, and six. Here's four, there's five, and as they come around toward turn number six down the front straightaway, once they cross the start finish line, then we start counting laps. And by the time they did this, as Eric Starr came out of turn number six, you can see the lead that he already had on the rest of the field as Rusty Wyatt was trying to do his best to stay under two seconds with uh, Peter Moran hugged up in that third spot. He was only uh, two seconds behind the Canadian driver. So Eric Stark uh, is trying to stay out of trouble. He did a really nice job as he worked his way around some of the back markers. There you could see uh, the driver, uh, Cedric Deguin, and he was in a real fight with uh, the youngster, Ben Jell for the UK, as they were charging their way and uh, battling for that sixth place position. And there, all of a sudden, Rusty Wyatt somehow saved it as he came through turn number two. And you can see Mark Major, his radio man, going, oh, no, how did that happen? He luckily was able to reel it back in. He settled the boat down. He kept it going. He lost about a half a second. This man, Peter Moran of France, was doing his best to stay up in the top three, which he did, but he had lost sight of Rusty White in second place. He was a good eight seconds behind him as Rusty White did everything he could to catch this man, Eric Stark, who ran it like he was on rails as he came through and uh, fought his way around the backside of the race course. It did a nice job of slicing and dicing through slower back markers and traffic. Not a problem, and Eric Stark wins by about 12 boat lengths, or 1.9 seconds ahead of Rusty Wyatt with Peter Moran taking the last podium position here in heat race number one. So mission accomplished for Eric Stark, who will be looking tomorrow for uh, his uh, seventh career, or make it his fifth career win, as he has seven pole positions here. And uh, let's find out if we can get a chance uh, as they're getting the boats getting uh, set. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's hear from our current world champion, uh, Jonas Anderson. We talked with him earlier. Jonas, is he ready? Let's find out. No, I'm sure I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed not to have the pull, but, but Eric is very, very fast, and many driver is very, very fast. It's not easy. From the one is at the top of our, our sport, so it's not, uh, not easy. Many other uh, drivers also have many problems, and then they are fast when they fix all the problems. And uh, we had a problem yesterday, we, we, we took the other engine, maybe it was not the correct decision, but uh, let's see, for the race, maybe it's better. Well, there's your world champion and his teammate, his new teammate, a rookie, one of two, battling for Rookie of the Year, is a young driver from Tallinn, Estonia. He's just 21 years old. He's a student, and I'll tell you something. This guy has got a great future with him. Stefan Arant, he's driving for Team Vietnam, so it'll be Team Vietnam 1-2 as they start sprint race number two. I'm super, super happy. Uh, I, did not, I did not think I would be in a position to fight Eric and Jonas this season, let alone this race. So I'm, I'm extremely happy and I'm extremely grateful for uh, Jonas for all the help and my propeller guy for all the work, uh, lock propellers for all the work that he's put into this. So I can't, um, I'm so... Well, he was the Estonian Driver of the Year last year. And let's go back now to the Driver of the Day so far, Eric Stark. And he is with our Jonathan Jones. We're down here on the pontoon, winner of the first race, Eric Stark. What a performance out there. Was it tough? Was it easy? Because Rusty seemed to be hanging on to you right to the last lap. Everything got last plan until the first boy, but then my plan was to pull away a little bit, but, you know, Rusty was so quick, so basically the whole race I was pushing at maximum. So, Were you? Yeah, yeah, so, you yeah, know. But in the end, you know, we managed to, to finish, and, you know, it's good points for the championship, and I'm very happy. Yeah, and do you think leading in tomorrow. Is that giving you an element of confidence that you can come away with a win for the main event in the morning? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's my plan. You know, I see the boat starting good. Um, you know, I have a good pace in the race. So, yeah, if everything, if everything working and the start goes as planned, uh, I think, yeah, we will have this. He's pretty cool, isn't he? I mean, no dramas here. Yeah, get out there, do the job. 
incredible performance out there this morning. But it was great to see the rust. He was pushing him hard right to the end. And it was not an easy ride for Eric. But uh, wonderful. Thanks for the interview. Yeah, and good luck much. for tomorrow. Thank you, Jonathan. You look cool, calm, and collected. Talking with Eric Stark, better known as the 36-year-old from Stockholm, Sweden. When he first came on this tour, this is his 10th season in Formula 1, he was known as the Boy Wonder. Then he became Mr. Miami in Swedish Meatball, but I'll tell you something, he's been a wonder so far this weekend as he's been picture perfect. He got the pole, and then at the same time, he won his heat race. So, so far, two for two for the man from Stockholm. I'll tell you what, let's take a look at who we've got on hand as we get set for sprint race number two as the parade lap begins as we go around here in the lagoon on a picture-perfect day. Jonas Anderson, who is the defending world champion, who was second in speed yesterday. He was less than three-tenths of a second behind Eric Stark. He did a 155.87 kilometer lap. So Jonas will start number one. And then his teammate, the rookie, Stefan Aran. I'll tell you something, if it wasn't for, you know, Rusty Wyatt winning the opening round, this guy would be getting all the talk as well because this kid has got a lot of talent. And he was just barely over three-tenths of a second behind uh, Jonas Anderson, starting second behind his teammate. Bartak Marzowak, the driver from Poland who won in Indonesia last year, so here in Southeast Asia. He knows what it's like to come across the, the finish line at number one. He'll be starting down in that third place position, along with Sami Celio. Celio, who has got 26 pole positions and two world championships in his long and storied career. Sami Celio with the Red Devil team is doing what he can to try to turn his uh, career around. He's tied for fifth with 11 points coming into this event. He's 0 for 30, though. He hasn't won a race since 2016, so Sami trying to get the uh, Schneid off his back. We'll see if he can do that. And then Thani L. Quimsey, another longtime veteran. Thani, who is driving for Team Abu Dhabi, the senior member. This is his 22nd season of powerboat racing. He's ninth in this championship with five points. And uh, for him, he started the year in ninth, and he was penalized and finished down in the order in 12th place. So team manager Guido Capolini hoping that Thani will be able to uh, put together a good performance here and move up into the top five. Now, Marit Stromoy, she is the uh, professional entertainer who has been racing for many years. This is her 16th season. She's got a victory. And uh, she is hoping to uh, stop her winless streak at 37. Here are the final three drivers. Andre uh, Bourgeau, the driver from uh, France in the Maverick Racing Team. He'll be starting uh, down farther in the order. Now, Ahmed Al-Fahim, who missed out on the opening round after he was docked a race by the officials after an incident in Sharjah last year that took out the three-time world champion Sean Torrente. So Ahmed Al-Fahim, who was a Rookie of the Year last year, is back, and uh, he is ready to rock and roll. And then Rashid Al-Quimsi, the new face. He's back again. Rashid, who will be coming up and starting his 11th career start. Last year, he raced just twice, and uh, he is uh, going to do his best to stay up into the top 10. So he's a replacement driver for Alberto Camarado. And uh, we've got two El Quimsies in the race uh, this weekend, something we've seen before. And uh, the kid's talented. He's got four uh, Formula Two World Championships. He's just trying to turn that around. And it's not easy, Jonathan, is it? Just because you're a, a Formula Two World Champion, multi-time as he is, to jump into Formula One boats, they're really a, a totally different animal, aren't they? Well, not only that, Steve, but to be fair to the young lad, is that, I mean, he only had a bit of free practice this morning, so he did about 10 or 15 laps in the boat. I don't think he sat in a Formula One boat now for quite some time, although he has competed in the past. And, uh, you know, to expect too much from him in his first event, I mean, that, that, that's a little bit unfair. The only thing I'll say is, in free practice this morning when they were setting the boats up for the event uh, for this event i could see lap by lap by lap that guy was improving a tenth 
tenth and a half, two tenths. So he, in the end, he was about the fourth quickest guy out there out of all the free practice. So we know he's very capable, but it's one thing, Steve, going out there and doing a lap when there's nobody else around and trying to post those fast laps. It's going to be another thing when you're actually in the race and you've got all that wash, you've got the spray, and you've got the other competitors against you. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. Let's not expect too much from him, but I definitely think this guy is on the money, and I think he's potentially uh, a future very, very strong Formula One driver. Bright and early this morning at 7.30, the drivers were out there for an hour a practice session getting ready for the pair of sprint races that we're having for you this afternoon. Peter Moran in the China CTIC China team set 11 laps. He was the fastest with a 44.25 or 154.8 kilometers per hour. But you're absolutely right, Jonathan. Rashid al Quimsy ran 25 laps, but he was the fourth quickest, as you said, so uh, he needed the time. He got out there and did that. He did a 45.0 uh, second time. So it'll be fun to see what he can do working his way around, first of all, fellow UAE resident Ahmed Al-Fahim is driving for the uh, victory team. Can he get around him? Can he get around Alexandre Bourgeau, the Frenchman who's in the seventh spot? And can he catch up to Reed Strumoy, who's going to start sixth today? Okay, this is only my opinion, right? But if I was, say, part of uh, the Team Abu Dhabi guys, I would put a slightly smaller propeller on that boat on the start. Something that's going to give him a little bit more acceleration and see if he can make up three or four positions on that first lap, which I know he's capable of doing. As you said, fourth out there this morning. He knows he's got the equipment underneath him. It's going to be interesting to see on that start. And generally, those Abu Dhabi boats are really fast. So watch out for him during the race. Getting back with a familiar number that he's raced with before, number 16, as he's the last boat in line, ready to go. And once we are in line, we'll have the start procedure countdown, and then uh, we will have the row of lights come on. And once uh, the three rows of lights go off, we will go racing. And this will be the second of two sprint races. Don't forget to come back tomorrow as we will bring you round number two of this 2024 World Championship here from Vietnam. And uh, yes, we will be on the air at 11 o'clock local time here in Vietnam. But uh, that's uh, 4 a.m. Uh, GMT. And that is midnight on the east coast of North America. So uh, put your jammies on and get ready to watch some powerboat racing in North America and see if Rusty Wyatt can come up with a second straight win. Yeah, I tell you what, though, talking about Wyatt, you know, when I, when I was interviewing Stark down there on the pontoon after his win in that first, uh, first race here today, he said to me, I had to push all the way. I thought it would have been an easy ride. Trust me, I was on the limit on every single lap. So he knows full well that if he doesn't get that start tomorrow, watch out for Rusty Wyatt because he may be able to bounce on him. All right, now this is the light test. That's part of a procedure. All drivers have to acknowledge that they can see the lights, so it's fair to every driver. The lights have come off. Obviously, it looks like uh, everything is copacetic, and it's going to happen here. It's finally here. Racing's back, and it's great to have you here. And this is our first time here in lovely Vietnam. Talking about rookies, Steve, let's have a look down the line up there. Stefan Arand, he's now in that second position. He's only ever run two Grand Prix. Again, great driver in Formula 2, something like Rashid. That's where he really learned his skills. He's moved into Formula 1 this year. Of course, he's with Jonas Anderson, who is probably the best teacher out there. And I know that they've been spending a lot of time together working on strategies, on setup. I know that Jonas obviously got the legs on him, but in this, this morning in free practice, he was only a tenth or two behind him. So watch out for a run there. Is he going to be aggressive? Is he going to push hard? Um, and is he going to be able to keep Bartek Marsalak at bay for this, uh, for this next race? Well, you look at the lineup, Jonathan. Who do you think? Who's going to be the hungriest? Who's willing to give it their all here on Saturday before we start Sunday's Grand Prix? Well, Fanny Alquimzi in fifth. We've seen him in many, many races. I remember Sharjah, one of the main events that we have in the Middle East a few years ago. He came from nowhere on that start. So again, don't assume that because Jonas is there on that pole position that he's going to have it easy for this race. All right, seconds before the start, the green flag is up. We're getting very, very close. Less than a minute to go before we go through the official starting procedure. The dock steward let everybody know that we're down to this final moment here. 
Should expect to see the 32nd board come up and then the lights should start coming out a row at a time. Gaff hooks in place. Drivers very much alone with their thoughts as they get set to go. The 32nd board is now up, Jonathan. We hold our breath here as we wait for the row of lights to come on and wait for the explosion of boats to come off the start pontoon. We hold our breath now as the sign comes down. We look down across this race course. One row of lights. Looks like the second row of lights. Looking for the third, and they're underway, and they explode away from the dock, and there's Jonas Anderson side by side with his teammate, but look at the jump that Bartak Marzouak, the driver out of Poland, as he noses ahead and now tries to hold his lane, he's going to be forced to go wide, and he does, and Jonas Anderson takes advantage of it. Now Bartak Marzouak has to sweep way wide in that white boat and give Stefan Arad a chance to get side by side with him. Now as they come down the front straightaway, Jonas Anderson, he's got a clear lane, he got the whole shot, he's got the lane, but Bartak Marzouak goes from third to second, slams the door on the rookie, Sami Celio up into that fourth place position. Wow, what a great start, Jonathan. Jonas Anderson has the lane, he's trying to power away, but Bartak Marzouak had an ace of a start. What an unbelievable start, but to fair to Bartek, he gave Jonas that inside line, he didn't come across on him, he gave him plenty of space, and of course that really did impede on his acceleration, but see, we can see Iran now trying to push again to try and take that second slot away from Bartek. Bartek closes the door on him, Jonas is away at the moment, he's probably pulled about two seconds on that second place boat, but Iran still hasn't given up for that second uh, yeah, Bartak Marzouak, I'll tell you what, he slammed the door, slid in, shut the door on him, and the rookie, Aran, is going to have to figure out another way around him. And look at the difference between second and third. Bartak Marzouak now pushing hard, and you can see farther back that it looks like Athaniel Quimsey's in a real dogfight with Sami Celio side by side for that fourth place position as they motor on through. And they push really hard, and Thani Al Quimsey on the inside trying to catch up as you watch the leaders come through in the top three. But the action's right there in that fourth place position. Thani Al Quimsey on the inside now, going down through turns number five and six as he gets through there. And Sami Celio shut the door on him and forced Thani to go back farther. A great job by the two time world champion. Yeah, what happened there was Thani was on the inside, Sami was on the outside. Outside. And of course, Thani was edging into that turn, but because Sammy had about a half a boat length on him, he actually buried the boat, turned a little bit tighter, and got that position back. But back to the front, we got Jonas Anderson. Four seconds now between Jonas Anderson and Bartek Marsalak in that second slot. Stefan Arant, great performance from the young driver, the rookie driver there, hanging on in third. Sammy Sellier now moving to fourth, and Thani just losing one position there, back down to fifth. Donnie El Quimsey is dogging Sami Celio, the driver from Finland, the two-time world champion. He's trying to close up on him. You can see him on the right of the screen, and he's forced to go to the outside. Doesn't want to get caught up in the wash. Doesn't want to get the aeration of the propeller behind him. Has to stay wide as they come down into that final turn complex here on the west side of the race course. And there you can see Celio in that Baba Bill boat by Massimo Ruggiero out of Northern Italy dancing on the waves as he flutters by in full flight. He's rocketing down the front straightaway. Yeah, it's great to see Celio there up at the sharp end, Steve. We haven't seen that now for quite some time, but we know he is very, very capable. And it looks like this year, slowly but surely, they're getting their act together. The performance has definitely improved from what we saw last year. And uh, nice to see Sammy up there, but there's still quite a gap between Sammy. Well, about 2.85 seconds between Sammy and that third place of Iran. Yeah, the middle of the field starting to stretch out a bit. We were wondering how Rashid Al Quimsy would do. He started dead last. He's only moved up one position and he's a ways back, Jonathan. He's trying to catch Great Strumoy and that uh, V8 engine that she's running. She's down in seventh place position and she started in the sixth, so she's going backwards a little bit at a time. Yeah, Jonas totally dominating this event, Steve, at the moment there. Jonas leading the way from Bartek Marsalak. The gap now is 6.7 seconds, so he's pulling away at about 1.5 seconds a lap, and Bartek doesn't seem to have the answer for him. Having said that, Bartek, he's sort of been midfield now for a number of races, and uh, great to see him back at the sharp end again. And tomorrow, when we've got a lot more boats out there, Bartek's boat is a little bit longer. It takes the rough water that much better. Watch out for this guy. 
Well, I'll tell you something. Jonas Anderson set the record for the longest stretch between first and second in his victory in Indonesia. He won by 13.7 seconds. Will he do even better this time around? We hold our breath. And of course, last time around, Bartek Marswak was involved in this run in that same heat race with Jonas Anderson. As you take a look at Thaniel Quimsey in that fifth spot of that number five boat team, Abu Dhabi, who for many years, Jonathan, dominated the team championship and they've been in a severe funk the last couple of years and they're trying to get their mojo back right now and it hasn't really seemed to pan out yet here early on in 2024. Yeah, I mean, they are, I would guess, the best funded team uh, on the circuit, no question about that. I mean, they've got some very, very clever engineers that work there. They actually build the DAC boat in uh, Como in northern Italy, so obviously they are developing this boat all the time and trying to get a bit more speed out of it. And, uh, you know, they have struggled a little bit in recent times. And uh, But, you know, all credit to the other teams, like Jonas especially. You know, he now is building his own boats there with another boat builder based in Denmark. And uh, together they're fine-tuning. The other thing with Jonas is he does the engine tuning, Steve. So every time he does a development on that engine, because he is a top racing driver, he knows if it's making a difference. Now, that makes the difference between, let's say, Jonas doing the tuning as well as building and designing the boats and let's say some of the other teams where you've got the driver and you've got a separate engineer who understands how to get horsepower out of the boat but you know horsepower is not everything and Jonas knows exactly how to get everything picture perfect and it's showing here now nine seconds between Jonas and Bartek. Yeah good point but let's talk about what's going on in the middle of the field they're fighting for the final podium position Stefan Aran is fighting Celio is getting closer to the rookie driver from Estonia and Thani is trying to stay right with him at two seconds back so the difference between third fourth and fifth is less than five seconds so this is really heating up here at the mid portion of this 18 lap schedule event second sprint race of the day yeah, as you say Celio definitely closing that gap about a tenth tenth and a half every lap but uh, you know he's going to have to make a move there's 10 laps to go to the end of the race so he's got time on his side but again like we said earlier it's one thing catching the driver it's another thing overtaking him as we see a round coming through again to do another lap Bit of clear water ahead of him now. He might be able to start pulling away from Celio. Good look at the two-time world champion. He's got 26 pole positions. This is his 166th Grand Prix start in 26 years for Sami Celio. And he looks uh, still as vivacious and exciting about running Formula One since the first time we saw him get in the boat back in 1998 when he was in Chalon, France, getting his first run in F1. As we look at Bartak Marzouak, who is 11 seconds back. He's out there kind of playing along, but you can see now that Stefan Aran trying to reel him in. So the rookie from Estonia getting a bit feisty here, and he can smell blood in the water, Jonathan, just like a shark. He's trying to move in and figure out a way to get around Bartek Marswak here at the halfway point. Nine in the books and nine to go. Yeah, coming out of four, five, and six there, and down into the uh, start finish line. You could see Aran trying to pick some clear water, as you said. That aerated water that's been thrown up from the back of Bartek because you've got the air in the water the propellers not quite working as efficiently so he's now you can see he's on the outside line there he's getting more drive getting more speed and slowly closing the gap 2.5 seconds now between second and third Stefan Ron the driver from Tallinn Estonia just 21 years old he's a college student his family's got a very successful business and uh, he's dedicated. They weren't sure, as you mentioned, whether they would take that giant step up to Formula One and maybe run another year of F2, but for about two months before we went to China last year. And then after that, he didn't get any points until the very last race in Sharjah. So he really had an up and down year. Yeah, and that, and that really was down to technical issues because in that first race in Indonesia, I mean, my goodness, he was like a rocket ship out there. He dominated, didn't he? Um, but then come the next race, they had some issues in the boat. Uh, they didn't know where it was, a wiring issue or whatever. And it took them about five races to be able to sort that out. So obviously that hindered him uh, during the championship after a fantastic start at the beginning of last year. He was sort of nowhere really for the rest of the season. But he told me that all of a sudden they found one or two things, one or two issues, and you can 
see this weekend putting on a really good show. Well, as you see, the rookie from Estonia coming by in third place. An interesting story, Jonathan, is as we look at the man in sixth place, Ahmed Al-Fahim, who is making his first appearance in 2024 in that number three machine. He is a driver, as we talked about, got docked by the UIM and was asked uh, not to uh, participate in the opening round after he uh, couldn't maintain a lane and he took out the three-time world champion Sean Torrente at the very last race in charge of last year. So he got his hand slapped and he's back again and he's a teammate with Eric Stark. He's in, started in the eighth position, but Ahmed Al-Fahim has closed up two. He's up into the sixth spot and he's staying ahead of, worked his way past Marit Stromoy and then uh, Rashid Al-Quimsy couldn't catch him. So Ahmed Al-Fahim who's known for desert racing, car racing, doing well on the water today. Yeah, no, putting up a solid performance. I mean, let's be honest, in Charger last year, before he had the accident with Sean Torrente, my goodness, he was quick out there, and he'd been gaining a lot of confidence. And I had a chat with him this morning, I said, how are you getting on? He said, I'm still a little bit apprehensive. I don't want to make a mistake out there. And he said, I'm not going to push as hard as I feel I can, but he said, I just want to get this race under the belt. I want to have a good, solid finish, and then we'll see how the rest of the season pans out. As you see the rookie, Team Vietnam are in two of the top three places. The fans behind us are cheering. You can hear them yell. They are all excited as we come down to the list in the final three laps of this race. And it looks like two of the boats, both members of that Team Vietnam, Bin Din team are going to make it to the podium, Jonathan. What a great day for the locals here in Vietnam. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice to see Jonas uh, basically been running that operation with a relatively uh, small amount of sponsorship for many years. And, uh, you know, it's so nice to see that Vietnam are supporting oh, that team Oh, there's a problem down year. the right corner. Jonathan, it looked like it was the driver number three, Ahmed Al-Fahim, as he spun out down at turn number one. He's trying to gather it back up, and here comes the leader coming at him, Jonas Anderson, as he spun out of harm's way and got through. And uh, that was a very, very dangerous uh, event because the leaders were coming up on him as he uh, luckily got out of the way, and now he's just trying to aimlessly get himself back up. What a shame for the driver from Dubai as he was uh, in the top six, and now he drops all the way down toward the bottom of the heap as a Jonas Anderson was lucky to stay out of the way. He was about two seconds, he'd been two seconds closer. It could have been more drama for this defending world champion. Like you said, Steve, it's never over till it's over. And Jonas with that enormous gap from second position there. I mean, unbelievable. Just looking on the, uh, on the scoring sheet here. So Jonas at the moment leading the way. And all of a sudden, Bartek Marcelak seems to have gone, has he gone down to yes, fifth position, has. Steve? So what's happened there? So Stefan Aram, the second driver in Team Vietnam, now in second position. My goodness, what a result in their home race. Team Vietnam, 1-2. Bartek having a problem trying to stay ahead of Marit Stromoy as he's dropped down to the final position here. As we come down to the final moments of this race, as we watch the boats coming through and just the last uh, half lap is our leader, Jonas Anderson now sliding out of the corner. Jonas Anderson, as he comes by, takes a checkered flag and Jonas Anderson comes out of the final corner heading for fame and glory and takes the checkered flag and he takes the victory. Did he set the resounding time? He holds the record for the most dominant win as Team Vietnam finishes 1-2. And yes, Jonas Anderson, the defending world champion, wins by a record-breaking 14.7 seconds ahead of his teammate as Team Vietnam finishes 1-2. And the crowd behind us is going electric. They're going crazy knowing that this could be a, a wonderful day tomorrow as a bit of a teaser here in this short race. It was sprint race number two, Team Vietnam 1-2. Sami Celio, two-time world champion, gets up onto the podium. Congratulations to him and the Red Devil SMC F1 team. But there it is, Jonas Anderson taking his second sprint race victory of 2024. He's two for two. And he went a second farther in this one than he did in the Ofenau. 
Yeah, so Bartek Marzwak was running strong. He was sitting there in the second place. He got around Stefan around, and here's where things went badly for the driver out of Poland. As Bartek Marzwak obviously having problems with the boat. It could have been trim. It looks like he wasn't able to elevate the nose of the boat, so he could have been plowing out there. But Bartek Marzwak struggling to get around the race circuit, finally gathered it back up came back and he finished up in the top five in that fifth place position but what a shame for the driver from poland as he was looking strong in that second place position and uh, ended up finishing in fifth so it's all about team vietnam here in the lovely province of bin din and on another beautiful day here hazy sunshine temperature above 30 c and it's been a perfect day for this huge crowd that has showed up today in the grandstand. Let's take a look at the unofficial results of sprint race number two. As Jonas Anderson comes home, he gets 10 valuable championship points. And Stefan Arana's teammate finishes up in second with nine. And then Sami Celio came up from that fourth place starting position, got third. Daniel Quimsey, who started in the fifth position, gained a position, went to fourth. Bartek Marzwak, who was fighting for the lead early on, worked his way past Stefan Aran and uh, was up to second for much of the time. Had a heartbreaking, uh, looks like a, some kind of malfunction uh, mechanically, and he finishes fifth. And then Marit Stromoy, who started sixth, ended up sixth. Rashida Quimsey, the driver who started way in the back, came home uh, from ninth to seventh. And then Ahmed Al Fahim had his problem down in turn number one and uh, spun the boat around and then tried to get out of harm's way and pulled away from the rest of the field just as the leaders were coming through. And then uh, Andre uh, Bourgeau came uh, in that ninth place position. He did not finish. So there you go. Two dominating races by a pair of Swedes. We expected as much. And uh, Sami Salio really happy. Why not? He finishes up on the podium place position in third, and uh, he's going to try to stop his winless streak tomorrow. He is 0 for 30, so that's what we have. So we've had a great day so far here on a Saturday afternoon as we work our way into the afternoon hours in the late spring. This was actually a very early morning for a lot of the drivers. They went out for an hour and had practice. and. Uh, from that point on, the race started locally at uh, 11 o'clock. And uh, from then on, it's uh, almost noontime here, local time. Here's Celio dancing on the waves. Oh, getting flighty. Somehow on the teetering of disaster, trying to save the boat. And at the same time, Bartek Marzowak right behind him. We were talking about this battle between uh, Celio and uh, along with Thaniel Quimsey. Bartek Marzowak, and it was a real dogfight for about uh, five laps with those three boats fighting for that third place position that was finally taken by Sami Celio. But, uh, you know, giving no quarter, taking no quarter. Sami Celio almost went over the edge, teetering on the edge of disaster, gathered it back up, and continued on and finished in that third place position. So, where we stand right now, we've run the two heat races. We know who's going to be on pole because that was decided yesterday in qualifying. Eric Stark will have uh, Jonas Anderson right alongside tomorrow. And it's going to be a real Swedish battle between those two as they work their way down to the first commitment buoy as we go for the Grand Prix, our second stop on the tour. Hey, it's going to be on at 11 o'clock local time. It'll be 4 o'clock GMT and midnight on the east coast of North America. So set your clocks for it. Be ready to come back with us tomorrow. And uh, it will be a, a exciting afternoon. It will be hot. And the wind is supposed to pick up just a little bit more. Let's go back down to my partner, JJ, who's a multi-time world champion. Who do you got down there, buddy? Well, Steve, can you believe this? Team Vietnam, first and second in the main event here today. Absolutely unbelievable. Jonas, you totally dominated that race. Get, tell us what your strategy was from the start. Bartek was really close to you coming around the first turn. He gave you a bit of space, but then you were just gone. How the hell do you do it? I mean, I should be honest with you. I missed the start today. 
I missed it. The engine and the boat, everything was good, but today I missed the start. But I'll tell you what, after you missed it, you certainly made up for lost ground. Yeah, Bartek uh, was starting first, so he cannot go inside to turn number one, and I had the opportunity to overtake him, and after that it was a very, very easy race, to, to be honest. But uh, short tomorrow is going to be a different story with all the other drivers and uh, Eric and all, so I'm happy for this win, but uh, tomorrow is going to be tough. Tell us, Jonas, tell us about this new young driver that you've taken on board. I mean, what a performance. Second position today. He hung in there. He was against the might of people like Sami Selyo and the rest of them. And he showed them a clean bill of health. Unbelievable. No, I mean, Stefan, I know him little from before. And uh, I mean, he did a fantastic job already in Indonesia. And now we come here. We are a little more prepared, but uh, I, I, for me, I have been struggling with my new boat. But uh, I mean, Stefan, I'm so happy for him and proud. He's driving like uh, he's done this Formula One in 10 years. I mean, it's uh, it's fantastic, and I mean, together we are very strong. It's uh, before I have been some time good, and uh, also Kalle was good, but uh, now we are too strong who can uh, fight for the podiums. And exactly, and this doesn't only be. be really strongly for the championship this year but also for the team championship was so important when it comes to the end of the season Stefan over to you okay so how did you feel during that race the performance was absolutely spectacular you pushed Bartek all the way and then you managed to get by up Bartek and you know you were in a very comfortable situation how have you found the transformation from Formula 2 to Formula 1 obviously the change hasn't been easy and uh it's taken a bit of time to get used to everything, and I'm 100% sure I'm not still at the maximum potential that I could be at uh, in this boat. Obviously, Jonas has provided me with an amazing boat and an amazing engine and everything, and my propeller guy has worked hard for this. So, so uh, yeah, but the race itself, I got off the line a lot better than I did last last race. So, so uh, I, I ended up being behind Bartek and, uh, after the first, uh, first lap, but I don't know, maybe he had an issue or something he did pull off off to the side for a bit and then I managed to sneak past so uh, his misfortune was my fortune again so and and do you feel that as the season goes on because you're getting more time in the boat you're feeling more comfortable in the boat do you think that you can even improve on the performance that you did out there today yeah definitely I I, I myself of care of course I'm happy for the result and everything but I'm not still 100% happy with my own driving so there's still a lot to improve I feel it I feel that the boat wants to go even faster, so I can't wait to go even faster with the boat. Absolutely fantastic, and good luck for the main event tomorrow morning. I'm sure you're going to do well. Steve, Vietnam, first and second. Good omen for tomorrow. Back to you. Thanks, Jonathan. You know, you look at all the uh, winners here today. They're all from cold countries. Two Swedes, a Canadian who finished second, and then, of course, uh, the Estonian driver, the rookie. And... Uh, Despite this heat, it seems to be working out well for these guys from the colder climates. All right, let's take a look at the highlights of this second sprint race that we had for you here on the water. And uh, it was uh, a pretty uh, dynamic uh, domination by Jonas Anderson. It didn't look like it at first, though, as these nine boats tore off from the start pontoon. And a great jump by Bartek Marzawak. Wow, maybe the start of the year so far. He came from the third place position and got up side by side and went ahead of Jonas Anderson. But the rules state that you can't cut over until you've gone all the way around the commitment buoys, which are three buoys here. So he had to stay to the outside lane and it cost him. And Jonas Anderson did his best to uh, get away from him. He got the whole shot and by this time Bartak Marzowak was a good 10 laps behind, and here was drama in the back. Sami Selio, part of a three-boat sandwich, fighting for that third-place position, almost lost it and almost blew it over, and he saved it somehow. And up front, Jonas Anderson was pulling away from the pack, and Bartek Marzowak was doing his best to stay right there with him after he got around, Stefan around, the rookie out of Estonia. And uh, as Jonas Anderson was uh, over on the far side of the race course, with the heat coming in, he was cool, calm, and collected despite what was going on behind him as uh, a couple of really good battles. And then this was misfortune for Bartek Marzowak. He just drove off the course 
Now, whether it was a steering problem or a trim problem, we can't tell. But obviously, uh, he came off in tears because he is hoping to get nine championship points. And instead, he finished in fifth. And this man, Sami Celio, took full advantage. And he came home up in the top three, got into the podium position. And he was behind the pair of Team Vietnam boats. Stefan around the rookie. He and Rusty Wyatt are going to have a great duel all throughout 2024, fighting for the coveted Rookie of the Year award because these two drivers are almost dead level on skill and points as they work their way down into the second Grand Prix of the year. And it was all about Jonas Anderson, fame and glory coming across, taking a checkered flag, and he wins by a dominating 14.7 seconds one second better than what he did last race in Indonesia to set the record for the largest form of victory. And he will start in that number two position tomorrow behind Eric Stark. So a pair of Swedes who are longtime friends are going to be battling it out tomorrow. Hey, it was great having you with us today for a spectacular pair of sprint races here in lovely Quinon. And we're getting ready for tomorrow's inaugural Grand Prix here in Binh Dinh Province in Vietnam. So come back and join us for the Sunday morning event at 11 o'clock local of 400 GMT and midnight in the north side of the eastern daylight time of North America for the second round of this championship. For my longtime friend Jonathan Jones, we say so long from Vietnam.